interested in the final velocity of a rocket after it consumes its fuel, um, well, we might think that we could use F equals ma, get the acceleration, in, and then use the kinematic equations. Uh, the problem with rockets is their mass is changing. So we have more or less a constant thrust, we'll assume, for the uh, fuel coming out of the rocket. But uh, the mass is changing, so the acceleration is variable. And consequently, this does not provide an acceleration that's useful for the kinematic equations. The acceleration is changing. You can't use the kinematic equation. So we're going to have to use the tools of calculus to uh, help us find this final velocity. We're going to say that we have a rocket with a mass uh, capital M. It's out in deep space, away from any star, away from any planet. So we do not have to include the uh, acceleration due to gravity on the rocket. Um, we start out with some initial velocity, v sub i, for the rocket. And we want to know what the final velocity is uh, based on this initial velocity, based on the exhaust velocity of the fuel, type of fuel we're using, uh, based on the initial mass and final mass of the rocket. So let's see how we can uh, proceed here. Well, because we're far from any object, the external force is zero on the rocket, and we're going to conserve momentum. The fuel combusted in the engine, if that's the means of uh, propulsion here, um, the fuel goes out one way, let's say to the left, and the rocket moves faster than to the right. We're going to conserve momentum. There's momentum in the fuel, there's momentum in the rocket, and we're going to conserve momentum. So I'll get my picture here a little bit too. Uh, so here's our rocket. There's some fuel coming out to the left. There's an exhaust velocity, V sub EX, an exhaust velocity for this fuel coming out. This V EX is measured with respect to the rocket. That's something to be careful of. We want to uh, you know, stand back and look at this system. And this V EX, we'll have to correct that to get it in the uh, our frame of reference as we're looking off to the side watching this rocket uh, accelerate. But back to the symbols here. Uh, we expel a small mass of fuel, delta M. We'll let this go to an infinitesimal uh, down the sheet here. Well, we have an initial um, conservation, well, initial momentum over here on the left. Um, so we have some uh, a capital M for the mass of the rocket, V for the rocket's velocity, and we have delta M and V. This delta M is still inside the rocket. Now, perhaps I should have written uh, before this little element of fuel goes out, our mass of our system is M plus delta M, and it's traveling with velocity v. That's what I have up here, so I should have started on this line. Uh, here's our total mass of the system. Uh, this is the shell of the rocket and remaining fuel. Here's a little bit of fuel that's about to come out of the engine. And we're traveling off to the right with uh, speed v. Then we're going to have some fuel come out. So there are two objects now on the right side to write down their momentum. The remaining mass of rocket shell and fuel is going to be traveling a little faster. It's going to gain a delta V. And here's where you have to be careful of this exhaust velocity. The fuel that's coming back here to the left, it's this exhaust velocity is with respect to the rocket. So I have to include the velocity of the rocket and the new velocity of the rocket. And then our exhaust velocity, our fuel coming back to the left, um, from these. But this exhaust velocity with respect to the rocket, this gives us the correct velocity as from our point of view off to the side of the uh, of the rocket. So if we uh, distribute here a little bit, so mv, delta mv, over on the right side there's more work to be done. But this mass is being distributed, so mv and m delta v. The delta m is being distributed, delta mv, delta m delta v, and minus delta m v e sub x. We want to simplify just a little bit, and we can do so because these are going to become infinitesimals. The delta m and the delta v, they're two of them multiplied together. That's going to be a small 
term, a small value, compared to terms that only have one delta, one delta m or one delta v. Uh, so we're going to drop off uh, the delta m, delta v term. And then notice other things that happen here. I've got an mv on the left that cancels an mv on the right. I have a delta mv on the left that cancels here, and we're dropping that term. So we have two terms left. We've got a zero on the left side, and I'm going to add delta mv exhaust to both sides, and that's then equal to the surviving term on the right side, m delta v. So if I bring that down here, uh, I want now want to make a substitution of this delta small m, that's the fuel. As the fuel goes out, the mass of the rocket is going to decrease. So the delta capital M is a negative number. What happens to the mass of the rocket? And making that substitution here, replacing this delta M with now minus delta capital M, V exhaust, and capital M delta V. I'm going to solve this for delta V. So I just divide both sides by M. Now, Let's go ahead and move to the calculus version here. So we have a situation where we're going to let the delta M become an infinitesimal, and the change in the mass of the rocket become very small. That's going to give us a small change in the velocity of the rocket, a delta V. Um, so that's minus V E sub X, moving that out in front, and then dm over M. To find our change in the rocket's speed, we have to add up all these changes of uh, delta V, these small uh, increases in speed, and go from a final, sorry, final velocity starting with an initial velocity. Those are upper and lower limits. So I'm really taking the antiderivative of both sides here and putting the proper limits on this integration variable's velocity. So I have upper and lower limits of velocity. Here I, my integration variable is mass. I have mass final and mass initial for the upper and lower limits. The exhaust velocity will take as a constant. So it comes outside of the antiderivative process. dm over m, this is a special antiderivative, a special case. You can't use the rules for powers. This would be m to the minus 1. Uh, that, if I add, that creates an m to the 0, and I divide by the new power, that's division by 0. So this is a special case. You need to look this up in a uh, uh, table of antiderivatives if you're not familiar with it, but it is the natural log. The function that's created by the antiderivative of dm over m, or dx over x, is the natural log of the integration variable. On the left side here, much easier. The antiderivative of dv, that just gives us v to the first power. That has to be evaluated at the final and initial um, velocities. So upper limit, lower limit, these are subtracted when we do the antiderivative process. Um, and then we have minus v e sub x, natural log here. that has to be evaluated at the upper and lower limits. So if we do this, I'll raise my page here just a little bit. So still v final minus v initial on the left, minus v exhaust, and now putting in the upper limit natural log of mass final minus the evaluation of the lower limit. And I'm going to incorporate the minus sign that's out in front here inside the square bracket. So now a plus v exhaust, and the signs have changed. So distributing minus 1 through the square bracket. This becomes minus log of m sub f and minus a minus natural log of uh, mass initial. Makes that a positive term. And now using the principle of logarithms, when logarithms are subtracted, I can write that as a single log with a division of the arguments. So we get v exhaust natural log of one number now. Not two separate natural logs, but natural log of one number mass initial divided by mass final. So let's say we have an initial velocity of zero. The exhaust velocity is 2,500 meters per second. That's a reasonable number with today's technology, probably higher. Um, but calculate the final velocity if we, the final mass of a rocket is only 10% of the initial mass. 
what happened to the other 90 percent? It went out as fuel. So our final mass is 10 percent of the initial mass. What number will we end up with for MI divided by MF if the final mass is only 10 percent, 0.1 of the initial mass? Well, that's going to be M sub I divided by 0.1 M sub I. So we're going to have a ratio of 10. The initial mass divided by the final mass is a 10. Um, is the natural log of 10 equal to 1? No, the natural log is not base 10. So you have to be careful of that. Use your calculator. The natural log of 10 is 2.303. And multiplying that out, we get a final velocity of 5,760 meters per second. 5,760 meters per second. You might notice this is faster than the exhaust velocity. That's perfectly legal. We're using the physics principle of conservation momentum. The mass has changed. So we had to develop this new expression for how the velocity changes. Um, we cannot use the kinematic equations. The acceleration is not constant. As fuel continues to be sent off to the left here, the acceleration of the rocket is increasing. There's less mass left here as this uh, thrust is more or less constant, the fuel coming off to the left. So the force is constant, the mass is decreasing, the acceleration is decreasing, and we had to develop this uh, formula here for the change in velocity of the rocket. Again, this only applies if we're not near some uh, source of, of gravity, a planet or a star. There's a different calculation for launching from the Earth into orbit. And you could uh, look that up or develop it yourself. But ask your instructor if you have questions.